Okay, so hello everyone. Um, welcome to the State of Atlas 2024. Um, we're going to talk about all of the cool features that Atlas, our headless WordPress hosting platform, offers. Uh, my name is Grace Erickson, and I am a headless um, developer advocate at WP Engine. I'm joined by Fran. Yep, I'm Fran Agulto, uh, DevRel headless side, and super, super stoked to be here, y'all. Okay, so before we get started, we have just a couple of reminders. Um, we are recording this meeting, and it will be available on our YouTube channel at WP Engine Builders after this. Um, so if you want to um, rewatch this after, um, make sure you subscribe for updates so that you know when that's posted. Um, Let's make sure that we are kind to one another in the chat um, and to all of the shared resources. And feel free to drop questions in the Zoom chat throughout this um, webinar. And um, we'll also have time for Q&A at the end. Okay, so what is Atlas? Um, Atlas is WP Engine's headless WordPress hosting platform um, with a emphasis on building fast and dynamic headless sites. Um, it provides a single end-to-end -end optimized headless platform, combining WordPress and a flexible Node.js front end. Um, so while headless hosting, you often have to manage the WordPress hosting and the front end node hosting separately, Atlas takes care of all of that um, and combines it all in a nice hosting package. Okay, and so let's talk about the architecture and the infrastructure of Atlas. So I like to think of it as three main layers, all tuned in and in sync to work together to provide this stoke-filled hosting experience for headless WordPress sites, y'all. So it's got a global edge CDN by Cloudflare. It's got an auto-scaling Node.js container building and running your framework code. It's got a WordPress install using WP GraphQL and REST APIs. There is zero DevOps needed on Atlas, as is the industry standard with any front-end node host. But the key, the key part here is Atlas does take care of both the back WordPress and the front end. And in a way, it's kind of like a Jamstack mullet. Business in the front, party in the back, y'all. So it's also focused on the DevX developer experience I had to get that joke in with features such as Git pushing to deploy from like three supported remote repos now. Man, when I was in, in its infancy, y'all, because I've been here at the beginning since Atlas started, we only supported one, which was GitHub. But now it's got three, Bitbucket, GitLab, and GitHub. You'll see in a second. And then you can create preview environments from pull requests. You can also rebuild your app using webhooks or... If you're a developer like me that makes a lot of mistakes and push something to prod that you're like, ooh, yikes, I don't like that. You can roll back and click to a previous version with just one button. That's my that's my spiel and it's, it's demo time. Demo time, y'all. Let's jump into the WP Engine portal. Okay, Grace, let me be your uh, GitHub co-pilot here, if you will, or your your, your real life Fran AI, but um, all right. So for those of you that aren't familiar, when you, if you don't, do not have a WP Engine account and we will have links to the free Atlas sandbox if you do not. But if you are familiar, this is the WP Engine user portal. It's great, it's user friendly. I like the CSS and the design in it. It's, it's dope y'all. So on the left hand side on the hamburger menu, you will notice something new. There's three stacks of microchips. Are those microchips, Grace? I think they are, because this squares. is tech. They're squares, <laughs> I guess. Click on that, Grace, and let's see what it says. Nice. So let's pretend, y'all, that you don't see the other apps here. Say it's just blank, so you won't see any of those. So we're going to just start net new, and we're going to go ahead and um, create an application. So click the button. Now you can, you have two choices here, as you can see the cards pull up. It's either start with a blueprint or pull from a repo. The blueprint will just pull down like a entire uh, boilerplate scaffold. But um, for this one, Grace, let's start with the, the repository because I want to show off the, um, 
the the net new and the uh, the three remote uh, repository support. So hit continue there. Ah, there they are. Okay, GitHub, Bitbucket, and GitLab. Uh, because and again, one of the, I think one of the um, best things about this platform is that literally when the community speaks, it comes through us and then through the product teams and 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 you li we listen to our potential and current customers. And this was from y'all uh, wanted more support for more repositories. And now we got it. But Grace, I know you love Microsoft so much. So you're going to um, you use GitHub. Great. And uh, let's go ahead and see the search bar, uh, bar right there. Because Grace, um, previously, she she already did this. But if you do this net new, essentially how it connects is through authorization. So um, you give WP Engine and Atlas permission to connect in what a, whatever repository uh, you have. And then once it's connected, it can see your um, what repositories, reposit, uh, repo, repos you have in store. So Grace, go ahead and pick whichever you, one you want. Okay, you're going to click continue and it'll tell you what uh, region you want your server to be in. And Grace, you're in Omaha, so central is fine. Hey, Fran, to interrupt you really quick, because you just shared this feature, we have a question. Is this, is self-hosted GitLab supported? Self-hosted GitLab? Um, that's a good question, Sam. Um, I'm not sure. I th Would it depend on the security? Uh, not at the moment. Okay, great. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, yes, Alana's here. Yes. Thank you, Alana. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so uh, so um, you can name um, whatever you want your brand main. I always do go main, and then it'll um, uh, you you'll have the root directory of what you want deployed. Call it uh, main, and then here's the uh, back end part that I mentioned that it provides. If you already have a WordPress uh, install. It's already connected and you can search through or you can create a net new one and WP Engine will spin you have a WordPress server and you'll have it connected. So um, did you already spin one up, Grace? Okay, yep. cool. All right, so um, you can go ahead and hit continue. And um, now the code is being pulled down into a build server and then it's building up the code and then it's going to push it up and deploy it. But let's see what happens here. Um, as you can see, she's on the main page right now of the application she just created. And it lists all the data that she would need as a developer uh, to, to see how your application is running and building. So if you scroll down, Grace, all the way down, it's gonna it's gonna tell you the status of what's going on now. So it's, it's building a um, the code in a container and let's see. We've got the build logs there. Now this this should, boom, okay, awesome. So we're doing this on purpose. We just wanted to show you uh, one of these, fe uh, the features that I think is awesome is that like, if there is something wrong in the build step of your Atlas application, the build uh, logs and the trigger when you click on it will tell you what happened. So in this case, we know what happened. Uh, I on purpose did not tell Grace, hey, your environment variables need to be set so that the front end node host can connect to your WordPress backend and grab that data. So go back and add those environment variables on the variables card here. And it goes by key value pairs, stores, so um, in this case, Grace, I guess, is it, um, did we pull out the, the Faust one? So is it next public WordPress URL is the key or? Yeah. Okay, cool. So you'll set up your key there and then you'll put the value, which is the URL. Once she saves all those variables and she goes to quick actions, she can trigger a uh, rebuild. 
Now the clean rebuild will just, um, I, the rebuild and the clean rebuild are very similar. The clean rebuild will just clear all the uh, cash on your framework. And then the purge cash will purge everything out of the CDN. Okay, so this should work, guys. Cross your fingers. And this isn't even really live coding, but let's hope it doesn't break because... <laughs> Oh, no. Sam's got her fingers crossed. It's always right. I remember, oh man, that reminds me of a story, guys. When I was a newbie in a React boot camp, one of the things we had to do, did it deploy? Come on, come on, application. Um, we had to code live in front of uh, one of the instructors. And that's sometimes unnerving when you're kind of super new. And I, I could barely write a React function. I was like, oh my God, I got scared. And then like, <laughs> I broke my JSX in my React function. <laughs> All right. Live. Build. Complete. Successful. So now what Atlas gives you when this is deployed live on the internet, y'all. And it should give you that nasty looking URL domain. Uh, let's see. Where is it, Grace? when it's deployed live that we can share. It should populate soon. It's alive. Waiting for, okay, so it's gonna deploy to the, okay, cool. It's waiting for it, but it's, it'll be live soon. So you'll get, you'll, you'll get that, that um, the URL with the um, wpengine.com appended to it and that that crazy looking hash thing that just like doesn't make sense. The cool thing is it's very easy um, and super intuitive. The Atlas team did a great job to like, hey, what if I wanted to um, uh, map my uh, to a custom domain that looks prettier? Um, there's the there's the URL and you can throw that in the chat so that people can uh, visit that just to see the site. Um, Thank you, Grace. And then if Grace wanted to, and obviously um, it's loaded, it'll be available soon. Don't worry, y'all. <laughs> um, <laughs> you can go to domains and then when you um, go ahead and go to domains, Grace, that'll, that's a good segue. Um, it walks you through putting your C name and your A record and providing your pretty URL so that you can have a um, good looking.com. Okay, uh, go back to main. So while that's populating, so there's a couple of um, other features that I wanted to go over and then we'll we'll be done and we can um, give you some uh, teasers at the end and um, open it up for Q&A. But if you scroll down, Grace, the other thing um, that is pretty cool, and obviously uh, this, won't, uh, this won't show because it's a net new application, but click on the runtime logs and this will capture events and messages that, that occur during the execution of the application. Um, so um, it's a net new app, but yeah, that, that'll be filled up once you guys have like a live URL and showing like what's going on during runtime. And then the other one that is super awesome is the access log. So click on the access log and it just basically access logs contain all the requests uh, made to your site that pass through the uh, Atlas CDN so they can help you identify like um, bad act actors, resolve issues, uh, any um, related to website availability and functionality. And you can gain insights to like popular content and ID traffic uh, patterns in your application. Now, what's cool is, is that um, you literally have granular control from a time perspective from start to end um, on when you want your access logs um, populated. And then when Grace hits request log after she selects a time that she wants, it sends um, you an email. And then in the email, it has the CSV file for all that data that you would need um, for access logs. So uh, that's a newer feature that I think I believe was released late of last year and this this one was also uh suggested by the community so yay for yes sam yay for access logs you need to have accessibility when you're 
coding these headless apps, y'all. All right, back to the page. We got more features. I'm super excited about this. All right, so, okay, preview environments. Now this, this is one of my favorites. It's an old table stake feature, an older one, but it's it's pretty sick. I love this feature. So essentially what this does, for those of you that don't know, is sometimes as a developer, you're like, oh man, I don't wanna push this feature to prod. I wanna test it in a isolated branch, a feature branch. Well, you can. And sometimes if you're in an organization that you have people that don't wanna to touch Git or don't wanna NPM run dev off a feature branch and don't wanna even have anything to do with the CLI or anything in any code, this feature branch will populate a URL that's shareable outside of your local machine to somebody else so that they can see the change in this feature branch before you push it to prod and merge it if you want to. Or you can like iterate on it and say, hey, I don't like this or whatever, okay? So Grace, let's go ahead and um, check out a feature branch. And yes, good call on the settings. Um, it's the cog that you have to put to enable the preview environments or else it won't work. So now all Grace has to do is get check out a feature branch. She can call it test branch, whatever she wants. We should uh, make a change, push it up. And that's going to trigger Atlas to create an isolated preview environment URL for it, not in production, but in whatever that branch was. And then you can share it before you um, make a pull request. Grace, do you have any, um, the, um, I think you did one yesterday while we were going through the run through. Do you have like a, a GitHub page open that has like, you know, you know, the, where the card populates and it shows that you just in case, uh, not everybody has seen it per chance. If not, that's okay. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Okay. Create a new branch. Yeah. Okay. Pull request. Yep. And then okay. let, just let it, yeah, should. There's, there's that live URL and you could um, essentially sh um, share it across teams and stuff like that. I think that's super valuable as far as like bigger organizations are concerned, even smaller ones, because there's not, everybody knows how to code or log into like GitHub or, but if but there might be some designers that you want to show off something that you you created and stuff like that. Okay, cool. Now the next thing I wanted to show off, Grace, is the webhooks. And I think the cog, yes, the cog oversees all. So let's create a webhook. So real quick, y'all, webhooks essentially like one of the best use cases I like to explain to people who are new to headless WordPress and even ones that have been using it, like probably would agree. Say you have like, um, say you have content editors that are adamant about, hey, I don't want to touch any code or anything, or I don't even want to log into Atlas or anything like that. But when I create new content and we read it over and I hit that publish button, like create a new post or whatever, I want the new data to be updated on the headless site. Well, you can do that with webhooks. So um, what happens is uh, when you enable this feature in Alice, uh, you get this URL, which is your webhook. Then you go to your, uh, we'll do this in a second here. We're gonna go to the WP admin. And then you, you download a plugin. I used to, I, I like to use WP webhooks because to me that's, it's a super intuitive one and it's free. Well, there's a pro version, but there's a free one. And we'll show you this, how this works in a second. So um, Grace, yeah, you can pick whatever clean rebuild or the rebuild and clean are very similar. So yeah, either or. And then we just go to your WordPress backend. Cool. And then plugins. Cool, you got web WP webhooks already uh, right. enabled there. Yep. And you'll see on the hamburger menu that webhooks um, option. So we're going to send data. Okay. And then let's just do it every time a net new post is created. So post created. 
cool. And you've already, yep, there's the clean rebuild and we're gonna paste that in there. You can just delete. Cool. Sweet. New post. Okay, now that she's pressed that button, the build step is connected. And every time your content editor now will create a post, it triggers a bill, rebuild into Atlas and tells it, hey, Atlas, there's a new post. Let's trigger this rebuild, clear that cache and data, and then get the new post onto the website. So do, yeah, whatever you want. When, when she hits publish, we can go back to the Atlas platform and you should see a build step happening now. Boom, web hook, sweet. Grace, is there anything I'm, uh, can you go back to the cog? I love this, uh, I love web hooks. There's all kinds you of things. Can't wear it, you can't while it's building. But. Oh, okay. There is a question in the chat. If you have an answer, I'll read it out. Okay, cool. Uh, Go ahead, Sam. I'd like to use a webhook with a single URL purge for Cloudflare. For Cloudflare, will this be supported this year? I don't want to clear the whole cache on WP Publish. Ah, uh, um, I'm gonna Alana, I'm gonna Alana. pass the ball to Alana on that question. I'm not sure. She answered in the chat. Um, okay, said, okay. Nothing on the immediate roadmap, but we are happy to hear more about it. It's funny too, while this is um, building up, I just have to make a comment. I, and it's it's not, I, I, this is not coming out of biasness or anything because I work at WP Engine, but um, seeing this Atlas platform from its infancy, because I literally was here when, when they first started this thing to what this is now and where it's, go where it's going as far as like the community feedback. I, I, I feel like a, a proud dad that I had a kindergartner and now it's like a teenager and now it's going to go to college. You know, it's just kind of, it's kind of cool to see the, uh, how, how this is evolving and aging well. Okay. Let's see uh, here. We can also talk about a couple of the add-ons that work with Atlas while this is building or now it's done. Oh, yeah. that's right. Yeah. Um, Cause I think that might've been the last thing. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Okay. There are two add-ons that work well with um, Atlas, and those two are WP Engine Smart Search. Um, so this one um, kind of takes over the default WordPress search um, to include like custom data types um, and, and just a more accurate search overall. Um, and then the Smart Plugin Manager, um, auto updates plugins and themes safely with auto rollback um, so that you can make sure that your site is always up to date. Nice. Is that all you had to show um, on the screen? Yeah, yeah I think that's screen? pretty much, yeah, I think those were the main things, features I wanted to go over. Um, there's a lot more granular things you could do uh, uh, with Atlas and there's uh, well document, there's good documentation. And I think we have that in collateral, but if not, I'm gonna go ahead and send that in the chat. But that's it, yeah, that's it. Uh, those are the main table stake uh, features I wanted to show. Here we go. Cool. Um, okay, so next we're gonna tease a couple of upcoming things on the roadmap for Atlas. Um, so we have improved static content management, full stack analytics, and more edge capabilities. Um, so with the improved static content management, um, we will have better support for Next.js's um, ISR, um, as well as some enhancements um, for content delivery. Um, and then for full stack analytics, um, this will help kind of bridge the gap in your site analytics. Um, so we'll have some more advanced tools 
to provide deeper insights into the performance of your headless WordPress site. And then for more edge capabilities, um, we will have um, a smoother transition to headless WordPress and crafting personalized user experiences um, to simplify executing code at the edge. Ooh, wait, Grace, just real quick. I just want to roll it. Did you, did you say, did I hear you say incremental static regeneration? Yes. Oh, you're speaking my love language. Okay, cool. <laughs> cool. ISR. Sweet. Um, and then I think Sam has a poll um, for everyone to kind of get a feeler for who is most excited for which of these three upcoming things on the roadmap. Yeah, I'm actually curious to see the poll. And then while we'll, we'll that poll is going out, um, so if you ha don't have Atlas already and you want to kind of try it out and um, try out some of these features for yourself, we do offer a Atlas free sandbox account. Um, and we can drop this link in the chat um, so that you can sign up and just kind of test out Atlas um, before, before you want to commit to hosting. And then here are a bunch of resources about um, our headless information. Um, so we have a newsletter that we would love for you to sign up um, to. We send out all of our content through that. Um, so it's the best way to stay up to date. Um, we also have a YouTube channel where this recording will be posted. And then if you just want more information on Atlas platform documentation, um, we also have um, that linked and then um, join our headless discord server um, where we have a big community of people working on headless and asking each other questions. Yep. The discord server is a party y'all. If you're not in there, jump in. It is a coding party. All right. So then with the last few minutes, um, we can open it up to any more questions that people have. You can drop them in the chat or unmute and ask them live if you want. Hey guys, Amber here. I had a question. Um, I think I dropped it earlier. I don't remember if I wrote it or not. Um, I'm wondering if those preview environments, um, they're a big long string subdomain um, when they're created. Would there be any ch anything on the roadmap about being able to edit those so the stakeholders, um, you know, can see a prettier Ooh. URL, either those or any lower lanes like dev lane, being able to edit those long strings? Ooh, that is a great question, Amber. And that'd be I a cool, cool thing to do. <laughs> I don't think there is anything. Okay, Alana said it is on the idea board. Excellent. I mean, I know it'd be di difficult because they have to be unique strings, right? But if they were, you know, just like when you create an environment, it checks whether that's unique before it lets you submit it. It'd be nice if it could do that and then just do a check. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Yeah, thank you for that feedback. Yeah, that's cool. That's actually a great idea. There's another question in the Q&A chat from okay. David that says, is the DevRel site getting an RSS feed on the roadmap? It is something that we have talked about. Yes. Um, <laughs> it is good to know that people want that so if it if it would be used then then we can move it up to a higher priority so that's good feedback also I don't know if this was answered earlier so I'll ask again and feel free to just say it was answered but um, there is a question is there any limitation on preview environments or how many preview environments uh, are supported as far as I know, no, there's not. I mean, you just, however many branches you you check out, a thousand. Oh, okay. Thousand. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, yeah. If you're ch get, if you if you're get checking out a thousand brand, man, that's a lot. But yeah, cool. That's good to know. Also, thanks for everybody for uh, 
uh, coming and joining our uh, Atlas party. Appreciate y'all. Well, if there, do you have any feedback? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's actually a good question, like the last question. Yeah, so please fill out the final feedback on the event. And then if there are no more questions, um, thank you for thank you all for coming. Yeah, thanks for taking time out of your day. Thank you.